Hi everybody, Gary Williams here for Toolbarn.com's Barn Banter. Uh, don't you just love cutting, hanging, and finishing drywall um, or gypsum? Actually, drywall is made out of gypsum and other things, so we can call it gypsum if we want, or sheetrock. But sheetrock is a brand name for drywall, so I guess uh, all sheetrock is drywall, but not all drywall would be sheetrock. Is that clear as drywall mud to everybody? It doesn't matter. We're, we're going to talk drywall today, okay? And we've got some tools that we're going to show you that'll make the whole process of drywalling from cutting to finishing go just a little bit easier for you. First, we're going to show you a really nice utility knife from uh, Milwaukee. And I'm sure you're sitting there saying, I got a million utility knives in my toolbox. What do I need another one for? Well, you might want to you might, might want to add this one once you get a look at it. So stay with us for that. Then we're going to show you a really nice drywall cutout tool. Now, the reason this comes in handy is in any drywall project, there are a number of cuts you've got to make to make room for electrical outlets or vents or whatever. This tool is made just for that job. You'll want to see this thing. But first, we're going to show you this thing that looks kind of like a metal detector. This is actually uh, uh, an almost completely dustless drywall sander. In fact, this thing is so cool that if Colonel Sanders had thought of it before he invented fried chicken, he would have invented this drywall sander. Get it? Sander? I mean, it's named for the guy, right? It would. I'm sorry. All right, let's just move along. Stay with us. We'll be right back, okay? One of the really messy jobs related to drywall, and there are a few of them, is obviously sanding the finished product. And that's, uh, that's a big job, and it's a messy job, and that's where a tool like this can really come in handy. This is from Porter Cable. It's a variable speed drywall sander. And I'll tell you what, this thing has a, a motor that goes from about 1,400 RPMs to 2,000 RPMs. It's got a 13-foot built-in connection hose, and the connection hose obviously connects to a wet dry vac. A quick example of how it'll work. Turn on the back. Turn on the sander. You probably can't hear me all that well. But between the back and the uh, uh, between the back and the sander, you've got a system that'll remove almost all of the drywall dust when you're doing the sanding. And what a big deal that is. That'd be a huge time saver. Uh, it keeps things a lot cleaner. It's just a lot better system and a lot better process to go through when you're trying to finish drywall, right? So. Check that out on toolbarn.com. This thing weighs about eight and a half pounds. The, uh, the pole itself is about five feet long, gives you good reach. Uh, I think I mentioned the 13 foot connector cable. That lets you get all around a, a pretty good sized area without constantly having to reset things up. So set this thing in place, go to work, and you'll get a lot of work done with it. Now, speaking of vacuums, Aristotle, an ancient Greek philosopher, once said, nature abhors a vacuum. Now, I don't know where he was coming from. I happen to disagree with him. I think a good wet dry vacuum is essential for any workshop. The guy obviously never had to clean up a workspace. You know, I'm not sure where he would have plugged it in anyway back then. But if you need a wet dry vac, we have a great selection of those things at toolbarn.com. And look for those that have the HEPA filters because HEPA filters do a great job of taking even more dust out of the air than this thing will with drywall work. So. A HEPA filtered vacuum is just the ticket. And you can see more about HEPA filtered vacuums if you go back and look at episode four of Barn Banter. We did that one, uh, oh, last year, several episodes ago, episode four. So check them out on toolbarn.com. You know what I think is cool about tools these days? Somebody is always trying to improve them, even the simple ones like, well, like the utility knife. You know, most of the utility knives I had in my younger days were uh, the kind that uh, they had a screw that ran through the, the sides that held things together and when you wanted to change the blade, the blade was fixed. You had to undo the screw, take the thing apart, replace the blade, screw it all back together. I don't know how long that took, but if you had to go through a lot of blades, it was kind of a pain in the neck. And Well, now this one is a little simpler. It's got a retractable blade, but if you want to change the blade, you press this handy little thing on the side, which is really, oh no, I'm sorry, you press it over here and it comes with, it comes apart very easily, as you can see. Putting it back together is not always such an easy thing. You know, it, it's just a pain in the neck to work with. Believe me, I've worked with this thing for a while. I much prefer this little jobby from uh, Milwaukee. It's the Milwaukee Fastback 2 utility knife. And this thing is a folding utility knife. It opens with the flick of a wrist. You press a button, flick a wrist, it opens. That's really handy. You know, that's just one hand operation to get this thing in service. And I'll tell you what, 
Uh, that's three times faster than messing around with a, a blade that requires two hands to get into service. The nice thing is you open this thing up, you're ready to go to work, and I'm just going to make a rough cut in this piece of drywall. You know, that's pretty darn fast from uh, start to finish. You fold it back up, stick it back in your pocket. It has a nice thin profile, so you can stick it in your pocket. You can hang it on your belt loop. Uh, really very simple and easy to use, very convenient to use, very fast to use. You've got extra blade storage. It's got a little magnetic feature in there that uh, will hold a blade for you. Close it back up. So you've got an extra blade there too. So it's handy to use, it's convenient to use, it's safe to use because that blade it's really easy to get out of sight. You don't have to worry about accidentally cutting yourself with it. Um, it's just an overall nice, convenient product. And for a utility knife, you wouldn't think that would be such a big deal. But uh, I've nicked myself plenty of times on tools just this simple. So I appreciate these extra little safety features. Now, there is what's called a, a gut hook on here. And it's this little feature right there, if you can see it. Uh, it'll cut little thin pieces of cord or whatever. And it's also got a wire stripper. Uh, on the blade right here. So you can strip uh, electrical wire if you need to. See, need to. So it's got a few different things in one that uh, make life just a little bit simpler when you're on the job and you don't want to go fishing around for the wire stripper or the pocket knife or whatever else, whatever else kind of blade you need. It's just a kind of a nice all-in-one sort of a tool. So check it out on toolbarn.com. Typically, screw guns have been corded. You know, they run on a, on a cord, something like this. They, you always have to have an extension cord like that. And I'll tell you what, here's uh, the obvious reason that OSHA doesn't like corded screw guns. Um, you know, they get tangled up. Now, this one, actually, I've tried to kind of keep it a little bit untangled here and there in the studio, but I didn't do a very good job with that. But the nice thing is, is, you know, you can throw that thing away, and you can opt instead for a cordless uh, drywall screw gun like this one from DeWalt. Now this is a really nice uh, piece of machinery, a piece of equipment. It's uh, got a brushless motor, it's got a 20 volt lithium ion battery, so there is plenty of juice there to do a lot of work. I'll tell you, it makes short work of putting those screws in drywall. And it, uh, you can also get an optional collated magazine for these things that'll hold even more screws to help you go just a little bit faster when you're uh, putting drywall on the wall. And that's Always a good thing. The sooner I get done with a drywall project, the better I feel, and I don't do big ones. So anyway, typically when you're hanging drywall, you're going to come to a point where you've got to cut some holes in that thing for things like electrical outlets, maybe wall vents, any number of things will require that you put a hole in that drywall. And when you want to do that, you want to do that well. You want to do it with some precision so you're not all over the place. And uh, people use different things to do that. They may use a utility knife. They may use a multi-tool. Well, DeWalt's got an answer. Uh, for its, uh, its, its users. And I'll tell you, this is a tool made just for the purpose of cutting holes in drywall. Uh, you can set your depth adjustment. This thing slides up and down. So you set your depth adjustment to the proper level. Basically, it goes. Okay, I probably could have had the depth adjustment set just a little bit deeper, but you know, this, uh, this opening would work just fine for a, a wall switch or even a, an outlet, so not too bad. And I tell you what, uh, you can do this kind of stuff with a multi-tool or with a utility blade, but um, it would have taken a lot longer to cut an opening like this using either one of those tools. And if you've got a lot of those to do, why not, why not get a, a tool made just to do that kind of thing? Uh, this is a really good one. It worked really quickly. It worked very easily. Uh, nice and smooth, easy to handle. It does take the same battery as the cordless screw gun, so you know, buy uh, each of these things and you've got batteries to go for quite a long time. So, a very good, uh, very good product, a very good system for drywall work. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but gosh, where can I find those things? Where can I buy that kind of equipment? Okay, you know better than that, right? <sighs> right there, toolbarn.com, okay? Check it out. Hey, thanks for being with us, and we hope to, uh, you'll join us next time.
By the way, we'd like to know what you folks think of the show. We're looking for some feedback. So if you've got any ideas for things that we've already done or things that we might do in the future, click on the link in this video and let us know. We'd appreciate your input. Thanks again, and uh, we hope to see you again next time.